Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. So today we will be dealing with the TIA EIA structured cabling standards. Okay, so TIA means Telecommunications Industry Association and EIA means Electronic Industries Alliance. Okay, so this TIA EIA structured cabling standards is now known as the ANSI TIA 568. This is a set of telecommunication standards from the Telecommunications Industry Association or TIA. The standards addresses commercial building cabling for telecommunication products and services. So as of 2017, the standard is at revision D, replacing the 2009 revision C, the 2001 revision B, and the 1995 revision A. And the initial issue of the 1991, which are now obsolete. Perhaps the best known feature of the ANSI TIA 568 are the pin or pair assignments for the 8 conductor 100 ohm balance twisted pair cabling. So these assignments are named the T568A and T568B. So if you're familiar with it, you're already using it. Okay, so this pertains to the crossover and straight through UTP cable color coding. All right. Okay, so for the topic outline, so we will be dealing with the TIA EIA structured cabling standards. So we are going to describe this uh, cabling standard. We will also talk about the TIA EIA 568 documents the features and functions and the structured cabling components which includes the entrance facility, equipment room, backbone cabling, telecommunication closet, horizontal cabling, and work area. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the TIA EIA 568 okay, definition. Okay. So the, the, the standard is defined as the TIA EIA structured cabling standards. It covers how to design, build, and manage a cabling system that is structured, meaning that the system is designed in blocks that have been very specific performance characteristics. So the blocks are integrated in hierarchical manner to create a unified communication system. So, for example, work group plans represent a block with a lower performance requirements than the backbone network block, which requires higher performance fiber optic cable in most cases. So, the standard defines the use of fiber optic cable, the single and the multi-mode, the STP or the shielded twisted pair cable, and the UTP or the unshielded twisted pair cable. Okay, so the next one would be the TIA EIA 568 documents. So the initial TIA 568 document was followed by several updates and addendums as outlined on our 568 documents. So a major standard update was released in 2000 that incorporates various changes. So these are the TIA EIA 568A 1995, or also known as the Commercial Building Telecommunication Wiring Standards. And then there is an update, okay, year back 1998 to 1999. You also have this uh, TIA 568B.1 2000, so Commercial Building Telecommunication Wiring Standard. Next is the 569A 1995. Commercial Building Standard for Telecommunication Pathways and Spaces. Next is the TIA 570A1998, so Residential and Light Commercial Telecommunications Wiring Standards. And you've got the TIA EIA 606 Series of 1994 Building Infrastructure Administration Standard. 
and the TIA EIA 607 series of 1995 grounding and banding requirements. Okay, so let's go over each of the document. Let's talk about the TIA EIA 568A series of 1995. So this covers commercial building telecommunications wiring standards. So defines a standard for building cable system for commercial buildings that support data, voice, and video. It also defines the technical performance criteria for cabling. All right, so next would be the 568A updates from 1998 to 1999. This was updated several times through this period. So update A1 outlined propagation delay and delay skew parameters. Update A2 specified miscellaneous changes. Update A3 specified requirements for bundled and hybrid cables. Update A4 defined next and return loss requirements for patch cables. And finally, update A5 defined performance requirements for enhanced category 5 or CAT 5E cable. So next would be the TIA 568B.1 series of 2000, or also known as the Commercial Building Telecommunications Wiring Standards. So the year 2000 update packages all the previous addendums and service updates into a new release, and most important, specifies that Category 5E cable is the preferred cable type that can provide minimum acceptable performance level. So several addendums were also released that specify technical information for 100 ohm twisted pair cable, so shielded twisted pair cable and the optical fiber cable. Next is the TIA EIA 569A series of 1995 or also known as the Commercial Building Standard for Telecommunication Pathways and Spaces. So this standard defines how to build the pathways and spaces for telecommunication media. Okay, so next is the TIA 570A series of 1998 which covers the residential and light commercial telecommunication wiring standard. This standard specifies residential cabling. Next is the document TIA EIA 606 series of 1994, or also known as the Building Infrastructure Administration Standard. So this standard defines the design guidelines for managing a telecommunication infrastructure. Okay. Next would be the TIA EIA 607 series of 1995, which covers the grounding and bounding requirements. This standard defines grounding and bounding requirements for telecommunications cabling and equipment. So the current trend is to evolve the standards to support high-speed networking such as a Giga Ethernet and define advanced cable types and connectors such as the four-pair Category 6 and Category 7 cable. So Category 6 is rated for channel performance of up to 2,000 or sorry, 200 megahertz, while Category 7 is rated up to 600 megahertz. So the remainder of this section discusses the EIA or the TIA EIA 568 standard in general rather than any specific releases. All right. Okay, so subtopics would be the TIA EIA 568 features and functions. So according to the TIA EIA 568 documents, the wiring standard is designed to provide the following features and functions. So first, a generic telecommunication wiring system for commercial buildings. Defined media, topology, termination, and connection points and administration support for multi-product multi-vendor environments direction for future design of a telecommunication products for commercial enterprises and the ability to plan and install the telecommunication wiring for a commercial building 
without any prior knowledge of the products that will use the wiring. So according to the TIAEI documents, the wiring standard is designed to provide these features and functions. All right. Next would be the structured cabling components. Okay, so this is the focus of this video. We will be talking about the TIAEIA 568 layout or the structured cabling components. So the layout of the TIAEIA 568 structured cable system is illustrated on this diagram here. Okay, so on this diagram, we have several areas for the structured cabling. This includes entrance facility, telecommunication closet, vertical cabling, equipment room, work area, and the horizontal cabling. So the hierarchical structure is apparent in a multi-floor office building. Okay, so a vertical cabling or a vertical cable in here runs from central hub switch in the main equipment room all right to the hub or switch and the telecommunication closet for each of the floor so work area are then individually cabled to the equipment in the telecommunication closet so if this is our work area here so each of the workstation is directly connected to the telecommunication closet via the horizontal cabling so the tia standard defines the parameters for each part of the cabling system so the, which includes this work area horizontal wiring telecommunication closets equipment rooms and cross connects backbone or the vertical wiring and the entrance facilities so each of these is described on this video so we will be talking about in detail about each of the component here. Let's start with an entrance facility. So the entrance facility contains the telecommunication service entrance to the building. This facility may also contain a campus wide backbone connection. It also contains network demarcation point, which is the interconnection to the local exchange carriers telecommunication facilities okay so an entrance facility will serve as the demarcation point between the isp or the internet service provider and the administrator of the organization this is where the functions or the roles and responsibilities of the company's network administrator begins and that of the isps responsibility ends so an entrance facility to a building for both public and private network service cables including wireless including the entrance point to the building and continuing to the room or entrance room or space okay so the demarcation point is typically 12 inches from where the carriers facilities enter the building so but the carrier may designate otherwise all right so if we are working on a campus we have to designate an area wherein our connection to the telephone companies okay you've got your internet or the isp if you are subscribed to cable tv so all your connections to the external world should be terminated via entrance facility all right so on our layout basically if we are talking about the building so there is one location or specific location that will be designated for the entrance facility. Again, entrance facility is the connection of the building or the campus to the external world. Okay, external world, we're talking about the internet, okay, telephones. So that will serve as the gateway of the organization's building or campuses to the internet. All right. So next would be the equipment room. An equipment room provides a termination point for backbone cabling that is connected to one or more telecommunication closets. 
it may also be the main cross connection point for the entire facility okay so in here the mc or the main cross connect together with equipment room in a campus environment each building may have its own equipment room to which telecommunication closet equipment is connected and equipment in this room may then be connected to a central campus facility that provides the main cross connect for the entire campus so it contains the main distribution frame the main location for backbone cabling phone systems uh, power protection uninterruptible power supply or the ups LAN equipment such as bridges, routers, core switches, hubs, and firewalls, and any file servers and data processing equipment, including the mechanical terminations. So the server farm is also located on the equipment room. All right. This is how a typical equipment room look like. So equipment room normally where the patch cabinet and servers on the local area network are connected to each other and hooked to the wide area network or one connections. So every structured cabling system is unique due to environmental variations. So the U.S. cabling industry accepts the American National Standard Institute or ANSI in conjunction with the TIA EIA as the leading organization for providing and maintaining standards and practices within the profession. In the Philippines, we also adopt this TIA EIA standards when it comes to structured cabling. Okay, so next component is a backbone wiring. So the backbone wiring runs up through the floors of the building or risers or across a campus and provides the interconnection of equipment, rooms, and telecommunication closets. So the distance limitation for this cabling depend on the type of cable and facilities it connects. If we are using a multi-mode fiber, that should be 2,000 meters or 2 kilometers. Okay. If you are using a single mode fiber that should be 3000 kilometers or uh, three, 3 kilometers or 3000 meters and if you're using utp less than 5 megahertz that could run up to 800 meters okay so a backbone wiring is also known as vertical cabling or wiring so these are the wires that extend from floor to floor across a campus or from telecommunication closets to an equipment room. This is contrasted with the horizontal cabling, which connects individual workstation to the network. So in our diagram, vertical cabling, these are the cables that connects its telecommunication closet on each of the floor. And usually the recommendation is we have to use fiber optic on the backbone cabling. All right. Okay, so in a typical layout, if you have a multi-layer or multi-floor building, okay, so basically your backbone cabling interconnects your telecommunication closets. All right, so other example is in here, where in each telecommunication closets, okay, so for each of the floor are connected to the equipment room. Equipment room is also known as the main distribution facility or the MDF. Okay, so core backbone cabling infrastructure is usually a vertical cabling system running between floors. All right. Next is telecommunication closet. So the telecommunication closet contains the connection equipment for workstation in the immediate area and a cross connection to an equipment room. So the telecommunication closet is general facility that can provide horizontal wiring connections as well as entrance facility connections. Okay, and this is how it looked like 
for our telecommunication closet. Basically, your telecom closet is a cabinet comprising the switches that is used for distribution within the floor or it could be within the building. All right. So on our standard layout here, we have several telecommunication closets. Telecom closet is also known as the Intermediate Distribution Facility or ITF. So there is no limit as per the number of telecommunication closets are allowed. Some floors in a multi-story office buildings may have multiple telecommunication closets depending on the floor or the floor plan, which may be connected to an equipment room on the same floor. Also called wiring closet. So aside from being called IDF, it is also known as the wiring closet. So a room or a closet that houses the telecommunication equipment is a telecommunication closet so it serves as a termination point for the horizontal cabling and contains the network distribution panels or cross connects and backbone so um, try to evaluate and observe this telecommunication closet here okay can you work on this type of environment how about this? Okay, so the cable is not properly planned and it's not organized. Okay, so this may happen if you don't follow the standard. I mean, you kept on connecting cables, all right, without organizing it. And one thing more is that if you will observe on this um, picture, okay, so everything or most of the color of the cables are in blue. Okay, so in practice, if you are connecting to multiple floors or different rooms or multiple buildings, this cable should be color coded. All right. So another thing is, how about this? Can you apply for an OJT here? Or even can you apply for a job? And your duty is to fix this cabling. All right, so you will be doing some sort of organization of cables. Okay. Next, a good telecommunication closet design should look like this. A very well organized cables. All right. Another example is in here. Okay, so your, co your, your cable is color coded and it's organized. All right, so the next one would be horizontal wiring. So what is a horizontal wiring? The horizontal wiring systems run from the workstation or from each workstation outlet to the telecommunication closet. The maximum horizontal distance from the telecommunication closet to the communication outlets is 90 meters or 295 feet, independent of the media type. If we are using a UTP cable, okay, so from the documentation, the maximum segment length of a UTP cable is 100 meters. Now, why only 90 meters is stated here? Okay, so the, the full length of the horizontal wiring should be 90 meters only. Now, where is or where are the remaining measurements here? Okay. So an additional 6 meters or 20 feet is allowed for patch. So when you say patch or patch cable, this is a type of cable or this is a cable that connects your computer from the wall plates. All right. So that is 90 meters for the horizontal wiring and 6 meters for the patch cable. That makes it 6 or 96 meters. Okay. Where where is the area four meters so four meters is basically used inside the telecommunication closet okay so connecting the switches with the patch cable or with the patch panel all right so from the switch to the patch panel four meters from the patch panel going to the wall plates that's 90 meters all right that's horizontal cable and six meters for the patch cable so all in all that's 100 meters all right. Okay. 
So the combined length cannot exceed 10 meters. Okay, so for the uh, patch cable. So that's what I'm saying. The four meters are used inside the telecommunication closet. So as mentioned earlier, the work area must provide two outlets. Okay, so the horizontal cable should be a four pair 100 ohm UTP cable. So the latest standard specify category 5E. Okay, so two fiber 62.5 over 125 millimeter fiber optic cable or a multi mode 50 over 125 millimeter multi mode fiber optic cable. So coaxial cable is no longer recommended. It's no longer used. Okay, so any cabling that is used to connect the floor wiring closer to wall plates in the work area to provide local access or local area network drops for connecting users, computers to the network. So it includes horizontal cables, telecommunication outlet or connectors in the work area, mechanical terminations and patch cords or jumpers located in the telecommunication room and may include a multi-user telecommunication outlet assemblies and consolidation points. All right, so on our layout, the horizontal cabling runs from the telecommunication closet on each of the floor going to the wall plates on the work area. Okay, and how does it look like? Basically, we have plenty of cables, okay, so running from your telecommunication closet going to the wall outlets. And this is how it looked like. Okay. So it runs on the floor or on the plenum. Plenum is a space between the roof, all right? Or the, it's, it's actually the space between the roof and the ceiling. Okay, so we call that plenum, okay? Now some are using conduit or raceways, okay? So we have this um, raceway or conduit wherein we use to organize cables okay, or uh, horizontal cables running from the te telecommunication closets to the wall plates or even from one building to another building. Okay, so it's usually made up of metal. Okay, so we call it conduit or raceways. All right, and the last component is the work area. So the work area wiring subsystem consists of the communication outlets, wall boxes and face, uh, face plates, we call it wall plates, wiring and connectors needed to connect the work area, equipment, computers, printers, and so on via a horizontal wiring subsystem to the telecommunication closet. So the standard requires that the two outlets be provided, okay, at each wall plate, one for the voice and one for the data. So basically, from the wall plates going to our, our computer, this is the patch cable, which is being measured earlier as 6 meters maximum. Alright, so the work area is the space inside a building where employees or students or building occupants or system users work and use their communication equipment. This is also the area where the horizontal communication cables are terminated. All right, so I hope you have learned something new from today's session. Have a great day. Thank you for watching and listening.